Testing for sound, one, two. Testing for clarity, one, two. Good afternoon and welcome to the swearing-in ceremony of St. Lucia's latest Prime Minister, newest Prime Minister, Philip Joseph Pierre. We had Government House on Mount Fortune, where soon we'll hear from the Mistress of Ceremonies. Uh, the Prime Minister-to-be will enter, followed by the Governor-General, the national anthem will be sung. Uh, then we'll have prayers by Ashdeacon 
Christian Glasgow, and then the swearing in ceremony of the Prime Minister, who will also take the oath of allegiance and the oath of office. Philip J. Pierre was selected as leader of the opposition following the St. Lucia Labour Party loss at the 2016 general election. He was confirmed as leader of the party in that same year. Pierre's mother, Evelyn, was a school teacher and his father, Auguste, was a policeman. Philip studied at St. Mary's College then completed a Bachelor of Honours degree in Economics and a Master of Business Administration at the University of the West Indies. After graduation, he taught at St. Mary's College for a while and worked as a trainee manager at Jake U. Charles Limited. Pierre then entered the finance industry. He worked as an audit clerk at Coopers and Lightburn and panel care foster and as a financial controller at Stanford Company Limited. From 19... From 1985, that is, to 1984, Philip J. Pierre was the director of the National Research and Development Corporation. He was also chief executive of his own managing consulting firm, Philip J. Pierre Business Services, and that was from 1990 to 1997. From 1985 to 1994, like I said before, he was director of the National Development Corporation. In 1985, he served as the party secretary and from 86 to 92, he contested the general elections for the first time in the Castries East constituency, but was unsuccessful. After serving as SLP chairman from 1992 to 1996, he ran again in 1997 and won. In the resulting SLP government led by Kenny V. Anthony, Pierre first served as minister for tourism, civil aviation, and international financial services from 1997 to 2000. He was re-elected to the House of Assembly from Castries East in the general elections of 2001, 2006, and 2011. In 2011, he was sworn in as Deputy Prime Minister and Minister for Infrastructure port services and transportation. He retained his seat in the 2016 general election, but the St. Lucia Labour Party lost overall. Kenny V. Anthony resigned as party leader, and Philip J. Pierre was then elected as his successor. He also became the parliamentary leader of the opposition. Philip J. Pierre, who is to, supposed to be sworn in in just a moment, is a member of the Commonwealth Parliamentary Association. He's also joined the Assembly of Caribbean Community Parliamentarians, attending its, its inaugural 1996 meeting in Barbados. Shakespeare says, no legacy is so rich as honesty. St. Lucia's new Prime Minister is a man of grit, courage, generosity of spirit. At a time when our country needs a clear vision, envisaged with clarity where we want to be 50 years and more down the road. We are calling on the entire community to get involved in identifying this national vision in an increasingly competitive world. Put in St. Lucians first with good understanding and cooperation. We will serve 
survive and succeed. Philip J. Pierre has never been afraid to live, to fight the good fight. Today in St. Lucia, it's not about black and white. It's about right and wrong. We were asked by our own new prime minister not to be afraid of hope, for hope we must, and hope we had and have had to survive the political assness. Today, Wednesday, July 28th, marks a new beginning in the political history of St. Lucia. Today, July 28th, Philip J. Pierre takes the oath of office as the eighth prime minister of St. Lucia since independence. Those who came before are Sir John Compton, Sir Alan Louisi, Winston Francis Snack, Michael Pilgrim, Sir Vaughan Lewis, Dr. Kenny D'Antony, and Alan Chastney. Speaking of Philip as a person, Philip sees you, he feels you, and hears you. A true patriot, honest, affable, disciplined, humble, with a deep inner strength, committed to service in the interest of his fellow men and women, like his parents before him. PJP strongly believes that money can't buy morals, class, respect, dignity, common sense, character, trust. He believes it's okay for you to believe what you believe, but it's not okay to demand others believe the same way. That respect is earned. Honesty is appreciated. Trust is gained. And loyalty is returned. The philosopher Confucius says, real knowledge is to know the extent of one's ignorance. And PJP knows he is not a god or a saint. He has a lot more to learn on this new journey he is embarking on with the people of this beautiful island. So he's calling on all our people to come together, red, yellow, and blue, for he never made any nation great. He campaigned in poetry and will govern in prose. Partisan politics and its tribalism have caused some of us to lose our humanity, which we must regain. Throughout his private and political life, Philip J. Pierre has remained grounded. His private life remains private and humble. He does not scorn the base degrees by which he did ascend. You, the people, we, the people, have always been first. PJP is a man who has developed an attitude of excellence in everything he has done and maintains that success depends upon a faithful, conscientious attention to the little things. Like Martin Luther King before him, he knows that life's most persistent and urgent question is, what are you doing for others?
that politics is part of the human condition and its divisiveness of partisan politics is what is undesirable. Never again will St. Lucians follow a leader who is more in love with power than people. On Monday, July 26, St. Lucians came together and followed the three C's in life. Choice, chance, change. We made the choice to take the chance to change our lives. Philippe J. Pierre does not pretend to be a man of the people, but a man for the people. And whatever he does in his prime ministerial life will echo in eternity, turning adversity into triumph, definitely, definitively, and unassailably. That the country must work for everyone, not anyone, building not for a day, but for always. We must make use of the opportunities, but the opportunities must be there. Real change takes time. Freedom makes it possible. Patience makes things real. And the future belongs to those who prepare for it today. We are still awaiting the arrival of the Prime Minister-to-be, Philip G. Pierre, to be followed by the Governor-General, Sir Neville Snack, who will be swearing in the new Prime Minister. Uh, this will be followed, the swearing-in ceremony, prior to the swearing-in, will have prayers uh, recited by the Archdeacon Christian Glasgow, the national anthem to be played by the Royal St. Lucia Police Band, and the Prime Minister-to-be will take or swear the oath of allegiance and the oath of office. He will then make his first address as Prime Minister of this country. We have in the garden today at Government House for this swearing-in ceremony the elected members of the new House of Assembly for St. Lucia. Uh, a number of dignitaries are also here. Uh, I could see the Honorable to be Richard Frederick, who run as an independent candidate. He run as independent Labour. Also seated is the deputy political leader, first deputy political leader of the St. Lucia Labour Party, who I assume will be the deputy prime minister in the person of Dr. Ernest Hilaire. Seated next to Dr. Hilaire, Oh, next to Dr. Hilaire is uh, the second deputy, Sean Edwards. Also in the gathering, also in the assembly, is the Mr. I should say Walcott, Tom Walcott, who is the chairman emeritus of the St. Lucia Labour Party, a position he has held for the past 10 years. Prior to that, he was, uh, he was chairman of the party 
for a, a very long time. He is here, also here is Sir Julian Hunt and Mrs. Hunt, Mr. Calix George is also seated here. Miss Emma Hippolyte, who won the Souffre Font Saint Jacques seat at the polls on Monday, is also seated as we await the arrival of the Prime Minister to be and the Governor General. We should have had a four o'clock start, but it looks like we're going to be around for a while before the event really starts. But to just to give you a, a, a little history of uh, party politics in St. Lucia, the struggle for representative government in St. Lucia, which is or which as in nearly all the small Caribbean territories was introduced in 1925 and was led by a Mr. T. G. Westhall who exhausted his finances in trips to Whitehall in the fight for representative government. It is said that St. Lucia owes him a deep debt of gratitude. Following this achievement, the candidates who presented themselves at elections came forward as independents and had one requirement. That was to have an annual income of not less than 50 pounds or property of equal worth to be eligible to vote. This meant that there was hardly 50 names on the voters list in the towns of St. Lucia. Candidates at that time kept their meetings in schools in the various parishes at high mass in the churches and the audience was allowed to ask questions. The choice between candidates would naturally and normally go to the candidate with more property and friends in the districts. Relative to candidates of these bygone years, one would remember uh, personalities like uh, Henry Delmar, R.G.H. Poppy Clack, George Palmer, James Charles, Andre de Boulay and Elwin Augustine. Party politics in St. Lucia uh, originated with far sighted personalities like the newspaper man John H. Pilgrim in collaboration with Carl Lacobinier. La Corbinier was then president of the Seducia Workers' Union at the inception of adult suffrage, although that union was the brainchild of Charles Augustine, who was its very first president. He was, however, through the hard work of persons like Herman Colimo, George Charles, Martin Jabatiste and several other members of the St. Lucia Workers' Union that the decision was finally made to form the St. Lucia Labour Party, thus giving that organization a political arm. Among the stalwarts in the formation of the St. Lucia Labour Party were Donald B. James, Vernon Cooper, Kenneth Carmichael, Louis Augustine, Fitzroy Skerritt, and Burke King. 
follow in several meetings of the party, the then Alan Lewis, as he then was, and later to become Sir Alan Lewis, was invited to join the St. Lucia Labour Party. He accepted and was unanimously elected the first president of the St. Lucia Labour Party, with Carl Corbinier as its first vice president and Vernon Cooper as the general secretary. These guys were the early pioneers. Just about the same time, Wilfred Sinclair Daniel, George Mallet, Clifford Edwards, Matheson Matthew, C.H.R. Charlie King, Robert Weeks, and some other young men united themselves under the chairmanship of the then newspaper man John H. Pilgrim and formed what then became known as the People's Progressive Party. Credit goes to Sinclair Daniel for initiating the first People's Progressive Party formation meeting. The Sir Garnet Gordon later joined the new form People's Progressive Party and contested the 1951 general elections under its sponsorship. The 51 elections, the first under adult suffrage, was therefore contested between the two political parties, the St. Lucia Labour Party and the People's Progressive Party. We were speaking of the of party politics in St. Lucia, and I was speaking of the 1951 general elections, the first under adult suffrage, contested between the two political parties, the St. Lucia Labour Party and the People's Progressive Party, or the three Ps, as it was familiarly called. The SLP won all but two of the eight seats then. The St. Lucia Labour Party also swept the polls in 1954 and again in the 1957 general elections. It should be known that although general elections were contested under the party system, the constitution at the time still kept the governor in council, that is the administrator, at the helm. The committee system, which elected members as chairman, was introduced in 1955 and the further powers were yielded in 1956 with the introduction of the ministerial system following the general elections of 1957 a new constitution was introduced in 1958 A federation of the British West Indian Islands was established in the year 1958 with Trinidad as the federal capital. This being so, 
there was need for St. Lucia to be represented, and the Labour Party selected Messrs. Carl Lacobinier and J. M. D. Busque as its candidates, while Donald B. James, a member of the party, contested as an independent. The People's Progressive Party put forward only one candidate in the person of William George Mallet. Le Corbinier and Busque won, and so Le Corbinier resigned from the St. Lucia legislature. On joining the federal parliament, he was appointed deputy prime minister, and uh, John Compton, the Minister of Trade, but in a later reshuffle, Herman Colimo assumed that portfolio. We are still awaiting the start of proceedings at the home of the Governor General of St. Lucia, the swearing-in ceremony of Philip Joseph Pierre as St. Lucia's new Prime Minister. Good evening, everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, our fellow St. Lucians at home and abroad, those of you who are tuned in online or watching on television or listening on radio, thank you so much for joining us this evening for the swearing-in ceremony of our Prime Minister, Mr. Philip Joseph Pierre. At this moment, I ask that you all please stand for the entrance of the Prime Minister. Please remain standing for the entrance of the Governor General. Thank you. Please remain standing for the National Anthem of St. Lucia, led by the Royal St. Lucia Police Band. Thank you very much. Please remain standing for prayers led by Archdeacon Christian Glasgow.
Let us pray. In the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord God, we give you thanks for this day and all the opportunities given to serve you. We thank you for all the experiences you have had this day and the various lessons learned. We thank you for the successful conclusion of our electoral process. We thank you, Lord, that we are still a nation where transfer of power and authority can take place smoothly without the rancor of violence of any sort. Dear Lord, now that the frenzy of the campaigning is over, it is our prayer that all can settle down now to the building of St. Lucia, this fair Helen of the West. It is our prayer, Lord, that the day will come when our electoral process and the campaigning will be at such a level of maturity where issues will be discussed as opposed to personalities. Dear God, we also look forward to the day that the maturity of this nation will be such that we'll be able to sit down and develop a national agenda to which all who seek to lead us will sign on to, thereby ensuring a constant growth and development of this nation. Father, as we come together for this swearing-in ceremony, we ask your presence among us to guide and to direct all things this afternoon. Dear Lord, we bring before you our Prime Minister designate. We ask that you give to him your sinful gifts of the Holy Spirit, especially those of discernment, wisdom, and fortitude, so that as he sits and contemplates the selection of a cabinet and the filling of the various positions so necessary for good governance, he may be able to discern the persons that you have selected, persons who will have the good of the nation at heart, he may be able to have the wisdom to understand how this process ought to take place, and more than anything else, lead this nation without fear or favor. Dear Lord, even as there is a change of governance, we ask that those who now shall be governing this nation will remember the several promises made on the campaign trail and more than anything else will seek to put the people first and to see to develop this nation bringing honor and glory to your name dear lord we ask that in all things your name may be glorified and this nation will grow from strength to strength this is our prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I invite us to join in the family prayer as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. May the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord delight the light of his countenance shine upon us and give us shalom, now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you, Deacon. You may have your seats. And now for the most honorable moment that we have all been waiting for, the swearing in of our Prime Minister, Mr. Philip J. Pierre.
The special part of our proceedings will be presided over by our Governor General and assisted by our Cabinet Secretary. I, Philip Joseph Pierre, do swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Zen Lucia. And I will uphold and defend the Constitution and the laws of Zen Lucia, and that I will conscientiously and impartially discharge my responsibilities to the people of Zen Lucia. So help me God. I, Philip Joseph Pierre, being appointed Prime Minister, do swear that I will, to the best of my judgment, at all times, when so required, freely give my counsel and advice to the Governor General or any other person for the time being lawfully performing the functions of that office for the good management of the public affairs of St. Lucia. And I do further swear that I will not on any account at any time whatsoever disclose the counsel, advice, opinion, or vote of any particular minister or parliamentary secretary. And to such extent as may be required for the good management of the affairs of St. Lucia, directly or indirectly, reveal the business or proceedings of the cabinet or the nature or contents of any documents communicated to me 
as Prime Minister. So help me God. Ladies and gentlemen, we now invite Ms. Sai Lewis to bless our hearts with special music.
let it overflow. Anoint me, Lord, this day as I go along my way. Let my life send forth the glow. Let the oil around me flow. Anoint me, Lord, I pray. Amen. Anoint me, Lord, today. We thank the very talented sister for her beautiful rendition. And now we invite our Prime Minister, St. Lucia's Prime Minister, Honorable Philip J. Pierre, for his address. Thank you very much, Mr. The Ceremonies. Excellency. Excellency, Commander Levitt Snack and Lady Snack, my colleagues from the St. Lucia Labour Party, let me recognize Murray and Felicia, friends, members of the press. Ladies and gentlemen, it has been a long and difficult journey, one that began when a child born to Ogis, a policeman, and Evelyn, a teacher. This child grew to be a man, always underestimated, sometimes ridiculed as a stutterer. But only this child knew that with the help of God, patience, dedication, and hard work, he would one day rise to be able to serve his people with love and humility. I, th <clears throat> I thank God for carrying me thus far. I shall require divine intervention and guidance in the coming days and grace in fulfilling the hopes and aspirations for the people of St. Lucia. I want to thank the people of St. Lucia and especially my constituents of Castries East for, <coughs> for their support and show of confidence to allow me, after 25 years of representation, to lead the country over the next five years. I want to thank my family 
Uh, this time, I want to thank and remember my parents and my brother. My friend Stokes, I want to thank members and executive for the Sanusha Labour Party and Team Labour 2021. <clears throat> I want to thank Sir Julian Hunt and Tom Walcott. I also want to thank Dr. Kenny Anthony. And all the people who really believed in me and encouraged me, even when it seemed that I would never make it. I want to mention Leo Clark of the Sanusha Labour Party. And my colleagues, Lawrence Yofilis. <clears throat> and the, the leadership of the St. Lucia Labour Party. I would like to express my most profound gratitude to you and the residents and citizens of this beautiful land who have honored your sacred obligation in our democratic society by exercising your franchise. You went out and peaceably registered your voice, not only in support for me, but for the party, the St. Lucia Labour Party. But against the things you thought were wrong about the direction we were heading. Naturally, not all of you voted for me and my party. Some of you did not, for whatever reason, share our views on the direction we should be heading. Thankfully, the majority were of a particular view, and that is, the country needed to be rescued from the abyss into which it was plunging. The majority of you accepted my offer to lead that rescue mission. So I offered to do so with a team of 15 men and women representing an excellent blend of experience and youthful energy. The full rescue team also includes you, the people. As Prime Minister, I promise to be Prime Minister not for some of the people, but for all the people. <laughs> this Lucia Labour Party has won the general election. However, we now have to manage an inclusive, equitable, and just society. I believe that our island can be won where dignity of the human person is preserved and respected, where our citizens are treated equally and given the opportunity to grow and achieve their full potential. Where the poor and less fortunate and vulnerable members of our society are protected and assisted by the government to achieve a decent quality of life. Where human rights of all are guaranteed by the government to all citizens. Where there is equal economic opportunity for all and the resources of the state are used to benefit the majority of the people since there can be no economy without people where all citizens can discuss freely the economic, political, and social affairs in the country, free from political victimization and retribution, where our patrimony is respected and our environment preserved. 
In the coming days, I shall be announcing my cabinet of ministers to manage the affairs of the country. I ask all those serving on the boards and statutory bodies to prepare reports on their tenure so that there can be a smooth transition. My sisters and brothers, this is the start of a new beginning for our country. As your servant leader, I shall serve all the citizens, citizens of the country, regardless of their social class or station in life. The task ahead will not be easy. But together with my team of able and experienced men and women, we will, we will deliver to the people of St. Lucia. I ask for your patience in the coming weeks and months as we try to assess the state of the country's financing and capacity to deliver as early as possible the commitment made to the people of St. Lucia. St. Lucia, we cannot fail. I will not fail you. I thank you for the opportunity to serve. I won't do it alone. <clears throat> I will seek the counsel of the wise. And if you stand firm with me, together, we shall not fail. Allow me to end with a quote from Nelson Mandela. I learned that courage was not the absence of fear, but triumph over it. The brave man is not he who does not feel afraid, but he who conquers that fear. I reaffirm my pledge to put you, the people first. Together, our island will prosper. I thank you. We thank our Prime Minister, Honorable Philip J. Pierre, for his very moving words. At this moment, I invite you all to stand for the singing of our national anthem. Please remain standing for the exit of the Governor General, His Excellency Sir Neville Snack. Well, there you have it. The swearing in ceremony of St. Lucia's if Prime Minister. The Honorable Philip uh, Joseph Pierre here on Montfortunately at the Governor General's residence. And now we stay standing for the exit of our Prime Minister, Honorable Philip In his address, Jean -Pierre. the Prime Minister <laughs> promised to be the Prime Minister for all of St. Lucia. Whether you are red, yellow, or blue, for hate never made. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining great. us. We ask that you, for those of you who are staying, we ask that you enjoy your time. That with the us. country we thank you, those at must home who are work. Tuned in with us. Do have yourself an enjoyable evening. That the country must work for everyone, not anyone. Building not for a day, but for always that we must make use of opportunities, but the opportunities must be there. 
Real change takes time. Freedom makes it possible. Patience makes things real. The future belongs to those who prepare for it today. From the Governor General's residence on Mont Fortune and the swearing in ceremony of St. Lucia's if Prime Minister Philip Joseph Pierre, I am Winston Francis Springer saying goodbye and have a pleasant night's rest and a good day tomorrow. Goodbye from Government House.